Hey everyone, welcome back to this crash course in the Italian wine region of Tuscany. In Italy, they call it Toscana. You're going to learn exactly what makes Tuscany a unique wine producing region, what types of Tuscan wines are out there, and where you should be in your journey in tasting these wines. I'm Tony Margiata, I'm a wine importer and author of this book, Hidden Gems of Italy. My life's mission is to look for world-class artisanal wines handcrafted in small batches in Italy, many of which have been overlooked and undervalued. My family's from a small village in the Molise region of Southern Italy, and I've been spending the last 20 years immersing myself in Italian food, wine, and culture. So where is Tuscany? Well, it's in Northern Italy. Uh, part of its border is on the coastline of the Tyrrhenian Sea. Um, it's very, very famous for its beautiful landscapes and hills. But what makes it even more unique is that it is the home of the Etruscan civilization. So Tuscany is named after its pre-Roman inhabitants, the Etruscans. The Etruscan civilization began around 3,000 years ago. And while the Romans eventually conquered the Etruscans, their influence on ancient Rome can still be seen. Many ancient Roman cities were actually named after Etruscan cities. Some historians believe that the Etruscans helped construct urban parts of ancient Rome, like the drainage systems. But the Etruscans were ruled by Rome for many centuries until they sort of merged with the Romans and disappeared from history. So in the Middle Ages, Tuscany saw many invasions, but in the Renaissance period, it helped lead Europe back to civilization um, with its rebirth of art, architecture, and economics. And here's a picture of Florence, which was really the epicenter of the Renaissance period in Italy. Today, Tuscan wines are renowned throughout the world from its Brunello di Montalcino, arguably one of the best wines in the world, to the super trendy, super Tuscans, and then there's Chianti, probably the most famous Italian wine in the world today. So how should you think about Tuscan wines? Well, just like any other region in Italy, I want you to think about the native grape varietals that are cultivated in Tuscany, and then also think about the Appalachians or subregions, as they're called. So here's a list of the native grapes in Tuscany that you should definitely check out. On the, for the whites, there's Vernaccia, there's Malvasia, and then Vermentino. Now, Vernaccia is probably the most important white grape in Tuscany today. You'll notice that Malvasia and Vermentino are listed here. Malvasia and Vermentino are also found in other parts of Italy, but Tuscany is definitely a region where you should check out these varietals. Then on the red side, we have the world famous Sangiovese grape. Uh, that's found in the Brunello di Montalcino wines, it's found in the Vino Nobile di Montepulciano wines, and it's pretty much found all over Italy. It's Italy's most cultivated grape, but they say the spiritual home of Sangiovese is in Tuscany. Then there's a few other lesser known grape varietals like Ciliegiolo, Foglia Tonda, and Pugnitello, all very important varietals that historically they were found in blends. Uh, Tuscany is world famous for its blends, um, like its super Tuscan wines. But super Tuscan wines, or what are known as super Tuscan wines, are Sangiovese based wines that also include French varietals. And so since this is a, a crash course in, you know, the wine region of Tuscany, I, I, I feel that it's important that we focus just on the native Tuscan grapes and not talk about the French grapes. So <clears throat> what's exciting is that even though these other grapes that are listed here uh, have historically been found in blends, there are some wineries popping up now that are making monovarietal versions of these. And that's very, very exciting so that we can taste the essence of those single grape varietals and get, get to know the character and the behavior of those varietals. Um, that's very, very exciting. So, you know, while all these wines should be easy to find, the best versions of these wines are going to be coming from small artisanal wineries 
that focus more on the quality and the originality and less on the mass produced wines that focus not on originality, but instead they try to satisfy millions of people with wines that taste similar to whatever's trendy at the time with these chemically altered mass produced wines. So before you judge any of these grape varietals, please, please try to find a small artisanal wine made in a small batch, anything from 50,000 bottles a year or less would be a great, great way to do that. I would not put a check mark off any of these varietals until you've done that because let's just say you pick up a mass produced wine that they make a, a million bottles of, um, let's just pick one, the Vernaccia, a million bottles of this Vernaccia and um, you don't like the wine. It might not because, be because you don't like the varietal, it might be you don't like the winemaker. So before you check off any of these grape varietals, look for small artisanal wines. These are the um, Appalachian maps for Tuscany. Notice on the right-hand side, we have the DOCG uh, wines. That includes the Brunello di Montalcino and Vino Nobile di Montepulciano wines, world-famous wines, as well as Chianti Classico. These are the DOCGs. Um, these are basically small Appalachians with very small territories where they can make these wines in order to ensure uh, character and authenticity. Because if people could make these wines wherever they want it, they would lose their authenticity. They won't taste quite the same. And on the left-hand side, you have the DOCs. There are dozens of DOC appellations in Tuscany. Um, I don't think it's important that you learn them all, unless of course you are absolutely obsessed with Tuscany and you're an Italian wine aficionado and you wanna just spend the next year tasting these different appellations, go for it. But I'm gonna give you a, a short list of a few that you should definitely check out before you move on to any other region. And I'd just like to add that if you're not sure what the DOCs or the DOCGs are, those are classifications, and I'm gonna put out a video that uh, explains them a little bit better in another video. So looking for wines that have these appellations on the labels would be a great start to get a feel for authentic Tuscan wines, and that's Brunel di Montalcino, DOCG, Vino Nobile di Montepulciano, DOCG, Chianti Classico, DOCG. Those are all the reds. They're all Sangiovese-based wines. And then there's Vernaccia di San Gimignano, DOCG. That's a white wine, a very, very important white wine from Tuscany. And then you have Rosso di Montalcino, DOC. Now, the first wine you should try without any competition is Vernaccia di San Gimignano, DOCG. It's one of the top white wines in Tuscany today. And I highly recommend that you taste several different ones um, so you can really kind of see, um, uh, so you can taste sort of like the uh, potential for that grape varietal. Um, and if you can find a small artisanal version of this, that's definitely the way to go. If you're already familiar with Vernaccia, the next thing I check out is check out some of the Malvasia wines in Tuscany. First red wine you should try is a little bit unconventional, I, I would admit on my part, but look for a Sangiovese IGT Toscana and make sure there's 100% Sangiovese. And the reason is um, I want you to taste the essence of the Sangiovese grape, its character. And when you find the IGT Toscana appellation, you're more likely to find a very, very good value. So for a very, very affordable price, you can, you can find them anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks easily. Um, you can find a very, very good Sangiovese IGT Toscana. If you're already familiar with that, definitely try the Rosso di Montalcino, DOC. Um, you can't go wrong there. Make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV so you don't miss out on the other videos about artisanal Italian wine and Italian wine regions and more. And remember, great wines are not made in great numbers.